everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to another live stream. I apologize for being a tad bit late. We are we are getting ready for our two week vacation. Um, we haven't had a vacation in a very long time. And now that we live um, in Merced, we are traveling back to San Diego for a few weeks. Um, we have a lot of fun things planned, um, but I miscalculated how long something would take. <laughs> um, so therefore I'm a tad bit late, but I'm here now. I'm excited to paint. Um, so make sure that you say hi in the comments. Let me know where you're painting from, who you're painting with, all of that fun stuff, okay? Um, all right. Hi, welcome in. Okay. Um, we are going to go ahead and go over some supplies, get everything out and ready for class. I'll go over um, a few things um, what we painted last week, um, as well as what's going on in Patreon. And then um, we will get to painting, all right? Um, okay, so the first thing I have here is my traceable. Um, I say this every class, my traceable is not necessary for the class, but it does help those who need it. Um, if you're a Patreon supporter, it's you get access to all of my traceables for my free classes. It started off just as a gift to my patrons um, and it's more become um, if you'd like the traceable support me so um, it's about the amount of a piece of coffee um, so if you would like to support me as an artist as a teacher it's five dollars for the traceable uh, you can get access to this one as well as the rest of them for this month as well as every single other um, traceable that I've ever had in my um, Patreon. So if you're, if you've been eyeing some other classes, uh, feel free to become a patron, go grab those. You can stay for one month. You can stay for however many months. Um, it's up to you. Okay. Um, so that is that that's available in my Patreon. And I have a link to that, um, in the description, um, as well as I also posted it on my Facebook. So if you're not on my Facebook, make sure to go on there. Uh, that's where I post the majority of my content is on my Facebook page. Um, and then um, I also posted it in the chat. So that is that. Let's go over some colors. Now, theoretically, these um, flowers, if you wanted a different vibe, um, change up the lilac. Um, I will say that uh, one of the things that drew me to this painting is the contrast of the dark background, the dark winged butterfly, um, and then the pops of bright um, purple and orange. So if you do end up changing the colors of the, of like maybe the, um, the flowers, I would keep the middle part orange because that matches the butterfly and you could make them light blue or light pink or whatever color you would like. Um, but I will be teaching, um, the lilac color and I'll be teaching how to get that color with, um, with the very dark purple that I have. So I have, I have a violet, uh, which is very, very dark. Like sometimes I'll put it out and I think it's black and then you start adding other colors to it and it's very much purple, but, um, I'll be making my lilac from that color. 
Um, so speaking of colors, um, oh, I'm using an 11 by 14 canvas and um, I do have traceables for 11 by 14 and nine by 12, but if you are a patron and you want a different size, make sure to just comment or message me in Patreon and I'll, I can just get you a different size. It's really easy to resize. Um, so yeah, just let me know. Okay, so for colors, we are gonna be using our black and white standard colors. Um, I put on their raw umber, but I am out, so I have my burnt umber. Um, it's pretty much the same color, except it's a little bit lighter. So if um, you're in the same boat as me and you want to use raw umber, um, you can just add a little bit of black to it and it'll become a little bit darker. Um, but any any brown should be fine because we can we can create whatever color we want for that um, for the um, for the butterfly. Okay. Um, all right, and then we have kind of an array of yellows and oranges. Um, you could either use yellow and red, or you could use like orange and yellow. Um, it's up to you. So I have yellow and orange out, and don't be don't be confused by my bottles. These are full body acrylics. Uh, they are not craft acrylics. I always feel like I need to preface that because some people will go to the grocery store or not the grocery store, we'll go to like Michael's or something and buy what they think is what I have and it's not. It's craft acrylics. Um, these are from Hippie Crafter. Um, they, they're they the best and they send me they send me stuff for free. Um, and I love using that stuff. So, um, but yeah, these are full body acrylics. They are professional, professional grade stuff. Um, okay, so white, black, brown, yellows and oranges. Um, and then I also have purples and pinks, and then I have a green. So those are kind of the ranges of colors that you'll be needing for this class. If you do not have exactly what I have, that is totally fine. Um, I've gotten in the habit of not even mentioning the exact color that I'm using unless somebody asks, because honestly, if you have close to it, it's gonna come out beautiful, it's gonna come out fine. Um, yeah, it's, I feel like the only, the only thing that I usually say, um, about the color specifically is that if I'm using ultramarine blue versus phthalo blue, just because phthalo blue has a little bit of a greener hue versus, uh, ultramarine has a cooler, um, more of a blue hue, um, and that will kind of change the t overall tone of it. But other than that, like we're going to be mixing all these colors and so it really doesn't. I feel like it doesn't really matter if you have the perfect color. And if you have a lilac color, um, then use that. Use whatever colors you have on hand. Don't feel like you need to um, get a violet, a dark color, and then do all the work to make it lighter. You don't need to do that. <laughs> and I could use a lilac, but I kind of, I, I don't, I like using all consistent things. Um, okay, those are the colors. I have my water, I have two things of water, just because whenever I'm working with dark colors, I like to have two things of um, water, especially because we're gonna be doing all the dark stuff first, um, and then coming over the top of it with our light colors, and I don't wanna have dirty, mucky water by the time I get to that. So if I always have two, just in case I need a clean water and I don't wanna get up. Um, I have paper towel, my palette, I do have a palette knife for mixing my um, colors. And then of course, um, I have my, um, all of my brushes. Now for today, um, I have my typical brushes that I'm gonna be using. My large to medium filbert. I have my small filbert. I have a, um, a large round brush a medium round brush and a small round brush just in case. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna be using. So I'm just, I got them out just in case. And then a liner brush. Um, I don't always use the liner brush, but it is helpful for those little tiny um, details in all of it. Um, and then for the, um, for all of the petals of these flowers, uh, when I first found this photo, I was just like in love with these flowers. Um, because they just look so fun to paint. So I'm excited for that. I hope you're excited too. Um, so I have a flat brush that I intend to use um, for 
each individual one. Um, it'll probably be easier to get a straight line with a flat brush than it will be with a small brush that can kind of go all waggly. Um, and this is very, very straight already. You could even do a couple dabs to create them, but we'll see. Um, it'll be fun. So I'm gonna put all these aside. Uh, if you have any questions, please make sure to let me know. I would love to answer them. Um, that's one of the cool things about a live class is that you are here with me, I'm here with you, and we get to um, go over all that together. Um, if you would like a different butterfly, feel free to draw a different butterfly. Um, butterflies are pretty easy to create. Uh, you just have the body and then the four wings. I feel like we've probably been drawing butterflies all of our lives. Um, so have fun with it. It doesn't need to look exactly like the picture. And again, I do have a traceable if you want to get it exactly like the picture, um, or if you want help and guidance on, um, placement or where everything is. Okay. That is pretty much it on that. Let me go over just a few announcements. Um, I already said that I am going on vacation for a few weeks. So this month there's only two live classes. So there's this one and then there's one at the end of the month. I will be sharing some of my favorite live classes over on my Facebook page. So if you're not on my Facebook page, please go over there. Um, I can post a link right now. Um, I post like 90% of all of my content on there, videos, upcoming classes, polls, you name it. Um, so it's very, very helpful. Um, to be following me there um let's see okay so here's that link feel free to do that now or you can do it later um yeah so i'll be gone for a few weeks i will be sharing some um some of my favorite classes um and then in patreon oh actually let's go over um last week last week was a watercolor class super fun class and I'll even give you a sneak peek into next month um but we have our dog roses our Rosa Canina um I am not Spanish and I won't fail I'll fail at it if I try to say it like um I speak Spanish because I don't um Rosa Canina um see there I tried it and it even sounds weird when I'm trying it anyways these came out really really pretty I loved all the colors I love the colors I love how soft everything is um and then it this went by so fast I think this was a 45 minute class even with doing a second one so it is a really quick class it's really fun um and it's super duper easy um so this was the second one that we did um, so I kind of added some splatter on there. I don't think I did that in the class. I think I decided to do that um, after the class, um, but it was a lot of fun. So if you would like to learn really simple, easy watercolors for beginners, this was a really fun one to do. Okay, so that is what we did um, last week. And then I have a sneak peek for next month. Look how cute. How cute is he? We're doing a hamster, um, but that's all you get. So. Uh, yeah, so I'm excited for that one. So that is last week and end of next month. Um, and then in Patreon, um, we have a Friday tutorial. We did this sitting Robin. This will be available on Friday. So this Friday, this will be posted. Um, make sure you look out on my Facebook page. I'll be posting it there. I'll also be posting it in like the community section of YouTube. Um, I don't know if people really get notified of that. I think they don't, they do if they scroll, but anyways. Um, yeah, so this one was really, really fun. Um, and it was a lot easier than I anticipated, um, but it was really relaxing because it was just kind of like, I don't know, we're painting a cute bird. Um, so this was really fun. So if you like painting birds, I have a few of them in my Patreon. Um, I, and we also did, um, I think we did a Robin, we did a Cardinal, this is a Robin, and then we did a blue tit on my free Facebook, uh, my free YouTube classes. So if you like painting birds, I have a, I have a couple um, that you could do. But yeah, that's what we did for the Magenta tier. Um, and that's the $10 level. And then um, for the $20 level, we go week by week. 
um, in my Patreon and we go a little bit more in detail. And let me tell you, this is after three sessions. It took a lot longer than I anticipated to paint like symmetrical straight lines are not easy. Um, and thankfully I had a traceable for this because if I did not, this would take so much longer. Um, but this is what we're doing in my Patreon for our cobalt class. This is three sessions in. I wanted to make sure that my patrons still had um, something to paint each week. So I pre-recorded three of them. We painted one yesterday and then we'll paint two more sessions over the course of the two weeks that I'm gone. And then when I get back, we get to paint our, um, our grass and all of our flowers. So I'm really excited for when I get back because all I wanted to do was paint the grass and the flowers and now I have to wait three weeks. <laughs> but that is okay. Um, I'll be excited to paint when I get back. Um, but yeah, so this is my patrons haven't even seen this. So you're getting like the actual sneak peek to all this stuff because they haven't even seen <laughs> this. I haven't posted it in there um, at all. Um, so if you want to join us for that, um, this is, we're going to be painting like flowering, like pink flowers and stuff like that coming out of it. Um, so yeah, and obviously the spokes because the wheels are floating right now, but you know, whatever, <laughs> we'll get to them. Um, yeah, but that is what's going on in Patreon. Um, as always, uh, I appreciate your support, whether here on YouTube or Patreon or Facebook. Um, I love painting and it's really fun to get to do it with people. Um, so thank you for being here and, um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Um, where is my water? Leave it to my kids to always take my water. <laughs> I think, uh, I was laying in bed earlier and Amelia came. Amelia is my youngest. She's like one and a half. Um, she came and took my water and was like, can I drink? You know? And then I found it in the kitchen on the floor, like three hours later. I'm like, how did this even get out here? I didn't see her leave with it. <laughs> so Lincoln, my oldest came and brought it back for me. Okay. Let's get started. So the first thing um, that I want to do for this painting specifically is outline my butterfly because the background is going to be fairly dark. Um, and I want to, um, I want to make sure that I don't lose my, um, lose my traceable. So, and I'm actually going to, I'm going to kind of just draw in where there's a ton of, um, purple in here. So this one's on this flower right here. There's a flower right here that it's on. And then I think what I'm going to do first is do one coat of, um, of like purple almost. I don't know. We'll see. Just like where all the purple is. <laughs> okay. Um, let's go ahead and get out our black. The first thing I want to do is go over my, the outer edge, the outside of, um, of the butterfly. So I have, you can do this with an acrylic marker, um, or you can grab a liner brush or a very small, um, just normal round brush. And I'm adding a little bit of water to this just so that it's very, very liquidy.
And I'm mostly focusing on the outer edge of all of this. That's pretty much it. That's all I'm going to do for the outlining. And let's go ahead and do the background. So for this background, um, I really kind of want to have some texture in the background, um, but not so much that it takes away from the butterfly. Um, that's the hope. So I want to do some dark, almost like brush stroke um, elements to the background. And I'm going to use my filbert for this, though I might switch to my flat brush if I'm not getting the correct like brush stroke look to it. Um, the first thing I have to do is create a bunch of greens. There's a bunch of different greens in this background. Uh, so I'm going to grab this light green. I really enjoy using this light green for my base because I can really like have fun and pretty much just create whatever green color I want from it um, by adding white, black, brown, and yellow or blue to it. Um, so yeah, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get the base color about like there's a color up in here that's kind of a base like green and then I'm going to darken it from there, add browns and whites to it. Um, and kind of create the other colors from there, okay? Okay, I'm gonna have more green. I'm also gonna get out my brown. Again, if you don't have raw umber, that's totally fine. I'm using my burnt umber. And I'm also going to get out some yellow. Now, I don't think I had this on the list, but I think I'm going to get out some of my blue, my phthalo blue, just so I can like make it cooler. Like make the color like more blue. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit of brown, a little bit of blue, and a little bit of yellow. And the goal is to get this green just, I still want it to be light and bright, but getting it a little bit more of like an earthy, realistic tone. Alright, so that's a pretty good color. I'm going to leave some that color. I'm going to take some and just leave it there. And the rest I'm going to bring over here. And for some of this I'm going to, oh I also need to get my white out. Um, the color, there's actually a lot of this um, is in kind of a whitish green area. So I'm going to, I'm going to take a big portion of this and put some white in it. And this is the one that I think I'm going to need a little bit more blue in because it's kind of got that like blue hue to it. Okay. 
It's also kind of grayed out, so I'm also going to add a little bit of black to it. Alright, I like that, but I think it needs to be grayed out even more. So I'm going to add some black and some white. Okay, I like this color. I'm going to add just a little bit more blue and black to it, just to kind of darken it up a little bit. Okay, that's a pretty color. Um, we're going to take, I think I need more blues actually, so let me get more blue out. I'm going to take some blue and put it in here, and I'm also going to take some brown. And then I'm going to take... probably add a little bit more yellow. And again, we're just kind of having fun with these colors. We're just creating an array of colors that we can use for the background. And because I want to focus on the butterfly and the flowers, I don't really want to spend too much time on the background. So I'm hoping to do this in just one coat. Um, okay, I'm going to grab some of my black. I'm going to start up in this right corner. And I'm just going to paint the I'm going to paint the whole side. This thing that just feels right. I'm going to paint the corner black. going to go into some of these darker greens I think I'm going to switch to um, a flat brush.
And I'm kind of going into the lighter greens right here because that light green will have a really nice contrast. And I'm gonna leave it textured in the background. So I'm not gonna worry about trying to cover up all of my brush marks. And I'm actually kind of like adding those in to add that texture. I'm doing a texture like this is actually really fun because especially if you either maybe miss a spot or um, maybe want to change a color somewhere, you can just add that color and not it's not going to look out of place because you already have so much of that kind of texture in the background anyways. So I'm going in with a kind of lighter version right here. So I'm gonna go in with my bigger brush just to put in like the base coat of these greens. And then you can come back in with the different colors and textures. And I'm intentionally trying to kind of go in all different directions. Alright, so I'm just kind of going based off of the photo and there's kind of like a, there's a couple flowers right here. Apologies. The one is supposed to be off right now. Um, so I'm just kind of trying to figure out where all the purple is. All right, so all I kind of just like went around all the purple. Um, so I do need to add that purple, that green kind of just everywhere. And I'm just going to brush into these circles. A 
while still adding the different colors and elements. And I'm again adding that same texture to this section down here. Tell you what, the style of background is actually like super relaxing because <laughs> like I don't have to worry about it like perfectly blending and if you're anything like me, like like if it's supposed to be perfectly blended, I will blend the heck out of it until I have to do another coat of it because I messed it up because it wasn't perfect but it started drying. <laughs> And even coming back into the top right section, you can make it blend in pretty much automatically by just adding the same texture that we had.
And I'm just adding a couple parts here that go all the way to the middle part just in case I want to keep some of that green um, to make it go all the way. Um, that's Those are kind of the parts that I will do it and that way I won't have to come back and like grab dried green or anything like that. So that is the background. Um, I'm going to just make sure that I have like all of the sides done too. So I don't get surprised later when I'm like, no, I forgot the side or the bottom or whatever it is. think that is good doing backgrounds like this is always like hard at first because you're like what am I painting and this looks awful and it um, but once you once you put in the whole thing and you really um, you really just kind of stick with it and um, it's almost like it's almost like the bokeh effect when you when you first start doing the bokeh effect with the sponges it's like uh, I don't know about this, but then once you once you start doing enough of it, you start seeing it, and you're like, mm, okay, I like it. It it's coming together. So that's how I feel like um, that's how I feel like this one came together. Okay, rinse out my brushes. And let's see. Um, I'm going to go ahead with white and put in all of the, um, put in all of the flowers. Okay. All everywhere where I want a flower petal or anything like that. Um, we're going to go ahead and put it in white. So I'm going to use um, this flat brush and I'm going to put one over here. And this should be a fairly quick process I would say
so essentially the what I'm doing is it's a super super easy process um, I'm taking just pure white I'm trying not to add any water to it only enough to make it easier to you know put on the canvas let me do the side here real fast Um, so what I'm focusing on is I'm just focusing on that outer edge and I'll do it up here and I'm just poke, I'm putting my, my, um, I'm putting my brush on the canvas and then I'm just pulling in. I'm just continuing to add like an overlap. And if your your white starts to become translucent, try to just add a little bit more paint to it or get more paint on your brush. I think I'm going to make more green come up into this.
I'm gonna come over here. And add some over here. I'm kind of jumping around because this one I put green on it and then I tried to do it and it was turning green and I was like what am I doing <laughs> um, so I needed to come out and do a different one so that is what I'm doing These ones all kind of curl. And this main flower has a lot of, a lot more detail and almost a lot of overlap. We are just tripping along. If any of you need help with this part, any, any advice for this part, um, just let me know what you're struggling with. I feel like it's a pretty easy process. So um, and it's pretty repetitive too.
And I'm going to go ahead and paint the insides of all these flowers so that there's at least um, some sort of a um, in inside paint. Just try not to cover up the green going to the centers of them. Right. so for a second coat I would just go in with any go in with white on any of the parts that you feel like um, the white didn't necessarily cover it up again like as much so right here I'm seeing a lot of like you can definitely tell the difference between the white and the green versus over here it's a little bit less defined um, so I'm just gonna go over here and add another coat of white just to that like base green part so that when we go over these with our um, our purple color um, it'll just do a better job of covering it up Um, for instance, I think this these flowers are pretty okay, but this one right here has a bunch. Um,
take a little bit of brown um, and I'm going to go ahead and get out my violet now and I'm going to add just a little bit of white and purple to this brown color and this is going to be the stem Kind of got like a purpley, purpley stem. And I'm just going to add a couple more in here that like aren't necessarily in here, but and then you can go in with some white, just mix it with what's on your, and then just add, add that to the left side of it. That's pretty much that. Um, so we have about an hour left, a little less than an hour, to finish um, the color of the flowers, the insides, and the butterfly. So let's go ahead and put in our first coat of orange. And I'm going to mix this orange um, with a little bit. The first coat is going to be a dark, um, a darker version of this. So I'm going to grab my small filbert. And I'm going to mix a little bit of this orange with a brown. And maybe like a tad bit of yellow. It's almost, it's close to a burnt sienna, but not quite as red. All right. And the reason this is dark is because we're kind of trying to find the medium tone, medium to dark tone, so that we can put in those lights. Okay. 
I'm not really focusing on any detail right now. I'm just I'm just getting in that base coat. And for this one right here, I'm only putting in half of it. I'm kind of flicking in. And it almost looks like already the petals of this one are already coming into that one. And remember that flowers, when you turn them, so this is like one that's facing you, when you turn it, um, when you turn it up, not only is it going to be more of like an oval, like you, what you see is the oval, but then right at the top, right at the top, those things are going to be kind of poking up rather than lay flat. At least with this flower, they, they kind of pop up. Oh, that dark orange color is amazing. Yeah, it's very, very close to what, um, what it actually is, at least what I'm seeing here. All right, so I'm gonna do just a quick second coat on the ones that have um, already dried. Just to get it a little bit more of a solid color. But once we put, start putting in that texture of the lighter colors, you won't even notice any brush marks or anything like that. There's like a tiny, tiny bit under this one. Okay. Let's see. Let's go ahead and do a first coat of our brown and black of our butterfly and by that time all the orange will be super dry and we'll be able to go over our white with all of our um, purple. I'm all about multitasking. I'm not going to wait, wait here to <laughs> wait for anything to dry. Um, I'm going to grab 
make sure that all of my brushes are um, rinsed out and just as I uh, said before like my water right now is like murky green um, and it does not look good so I will definitely be using my clean water um, when I go into my lighter colors um, I'm gonna grab my kind of medium to small round brush and I'm gonna grab some black hair I almost went into the purple is dangerous having those so close together And I'm just going to go over the little tiny dots and stuff like that. I'll leave the main um, section of white. Um, but I'm going to just go over the little white dots. Or sorry, the, the main section of orange I'm going to leave. But I'm going to go over the parts that are, um, that are white. It'll just make it, it'll make life a lot easier. I won't have to go over it. Um, and I'll be able to just kind of pick and choose where I want this stuff later. Instead of trying, trying to correct anything. I'm going to mix a little bit of brown into my black right here and just instead of going over it with black, going over it with a little bit of brown as a first coat. where I put it down and thought it was falling but it wasn't but when I tried to correct what I thought it was falling I knocked it over <laughs> so like it wasn't falling but me thinking that it was falling made it fall it's like self-fulfilling prophecy nice <laughs>
Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing that I did over there. I'm just gonna mix this part with brown. And just for the sake of the bottom coat, I'm going to add just a little bit of white. Um, to um, to it so that I can still differentiate um, like the bottom half and the top half. that's kind of the first coat on that. I'm going to go ahead and change to a larger brush and go ahead and paint the inside of this. And I'm going to do it um, technically like a dark grayish color.
Let's go ahead and do our purple. It's so satisfying. I'm just going to clean off some of this so that I have a little bit more room. I don't think I need any of this green, but just in case, I'm going to keep the parts that are actually um, that actually have paint in them. That gives me a little bit more space. one of these palettes, I uh, highly recommend them. All right, I'm going to make my purple. Um, I'm going to have, I'm going to take my, my white and a little bit of purple and I am gonna need quite a bit of this. So I'm gonna grab a lot more white. Go all the way over there. And I'm also going to get out a pink because the purple that I have isn't gonna have that nice um, like pinkish lilac hue to it. I'm gonna mix this. And I probably won't need that much pink. So I could probably put some of this back, <laughs> not waste it. Um, that being said, I'm going to just mix this in just to give it an ever so slight pink hue to it. that is a good color so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and use it um, I'm gonna go ahead and do some of them in a darker hue and then I will come over the top of it with a lighter brighter hue and that's gonna give the flowers a little bit of dimension so I'm gonna take just a small bit of this and I'm going to darken it just ever so slightly with a little bit more purple. And maybe like a tiny bit of black. Work in, in teeny tiny amounts until you get 
the a little bit darker of a hue that you want. Okay, so I have this darker version and then I also created like a in-between just in case um, I need to pull from a darker hue but it's not as dark. Um, okay, I'm going to rinse out my brush in the murky water and then rinse out my brush in the clean water. Alright, and I'm going to start with this darker hue. And I'm just going to start adding I am kind of going from the center pulling out a little bit just to get the the basics of that color. So what I'm finding out with this purple is because it's so light of a color, if you add a little bit of water with it, you can just color the whole plant and it really, you really can't even see it. Um, you can't even see it on the green. And I'm just brushing out. So if you have a little bit of water in your mixture, then you can just come in pretty much just with a, a wash and color them all. Okay. 
And I realize with the positioning of this one, this one needs to have a center. I'm just going to push out and I'll put in a center. I do plan to come in with like lighter colors, but for right now, um, the just the wash of purple is working really well.
So I'm just pulling it out from the middle. And then any place where I feel like I need specific attention. I can go in detail with my brush by just turning it to the side. Even just that first coat, it makes it look so good. So with this second coat, I'm going to be a little bit more intentional. I'm not going to go over all of them. I'm going to focus on the ones that I either missed in the first time around or I think maybe needs a second coat of something. I think I am going to add a little bit of white to this though. I'm feeling like it needs just a little bit of a pop in color, pop in um, brightness I should say. And then you can always come back in with an even brighter one and add a little bit, add a little bit more detail.
say I'm not spending a whole lot of time on like each individual flower. What's nice is that first coat did so much for us. But at this point, I'm just adding in like highlights and details. I'm going to go ahead and get a um, purple that's a little bit darker and put in some shadows underneath the um, butterfly. So I just added a little bit more purple. And you can also add this to the insides of your um, flowers if you want to depending on the angle I would recommend only adding it to like the right side I think or wherever there's a shadow Come in with some a lighter white. That is pretty good. Let's go ahead and work on the center of our um, flowers right after we do a first coat of orange on our butterfly. So I'm just going to go over these sections here. With that orange.
right, so now we have a first coat of orange on our um, our butterfly. Um, now we get to put um, some texture on our the inside of our um, um, the inside of our flowers. I'm gonna grab some yellow. And I'm going to grab a different brush that I can stipple with, that I'm okay with kind of roughening up. And I'm gonna grab some orange and yellow, and maybe like a tad bit of brown, not too much. And I'm just going to Start, start um, a little bit. See where I'm at. I can see that I need to go a little bit lighter. But I think this is good to start with. And this is mostly going to be for the middle of the stamen. Like the very middle part. So don't cover up at all. So I'm going to add a little bit more yellow, maybe like a slight bit of white. I'm kind of going to go in a circle around the very middle part. And for the ones that are kind of um, slanted and you kind of see it from the side, it's mostly going to be on the top portion of it. Okay, so I think that's all I can do with this. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my um, my liner brush and have fun with my liner brush. I'm gonna give a little bit more of a center. I almost want a little bit more orange over here. So I'm going to take my, um, my yellow and maybe a little bit of white. Just so that it's a little bit more opaque. And I'm going to 
just add a bunch of lines. And then there's kind of some orange parts in the middle section that you can add as well. And you're just gonna continue doing that all the way around, all of them, and then um, we'll go ahead and put our final details on our butterfly. I'm not going to put as much detail on the back ones as I do the front ones because those are, you know, further away. And what's cool about paintings is that um, once you put in a little bit of detail, your mind starts to just um, kind of make up the detail. So if you put a detail on a, a, a couple of them, when you look at the whole painting, it's just all that detail is, is there. As you get away from the center, they start becoming a little bit um, further away from each other, so there's not as many. pretty much it. For the flowers, I think they came out really, really pretty. Let's go ahead and finish up our um, butterfly and then we'll get you guys out of here. I'm going to fix the Head here in a second. And I'm going to do one more coat of black on the black parts of it.
I'm going to create a brown color so that I can do that middle part. And it almost looks like feathery mothy almost. Um, so I'm going to grab some white, a little bit of brown, a little bit of black to kind of create its like to make it gray a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and I don't know how I got the same exact color, but I did. I'm going to put this on in a kind of um, wispy way and then I'm also going to come and use a little bit of a lighter version maybe add some white to it those that's kind of that area and just adding that those kind of streaks make it look a little bit kind of feathery a little bit which I think works and And then you can come behind and put any highlights or anything like that that you need to. Um, as well as if you need to put any dark spots like the um, underneath the wing. And not only will that help create contrast but there's also some black areas down here that you can put in. Little black, just like dot sections, whatever you wanna call them. on his body just a little bit because I think the actual um, I almost said feathers the actual wings of um, it look really good so I'm going to create a 
I'm going to do black on just the outer edge of it. Um, and then I'm going to come back with a gray and kind of put that in the middle. And I can do this while it's still wet. You can do it while it's still wet or you can wait until it dries. It's up to you um, how you like to blend things. If you like to do dry blending or if you like to do um, uh, or if you like to do wet on wet. I'm just adding little details that I see the different um, colors and all right I'm gonna go in with my white I'm gonna grab a small brush with just pure white I'm going to start adding these kind of just blobs of white in here. Whatever you do to one side, try to do the other. It doesn't have to be perfect because the wings aren't perfectly the same. Um, but you want to try to kind of make them a little bit the same. Then you're going to add lines all the way around the butterfly, the edges of the butterfly. Any other details that you see there's almost like a second line of white right above that and there's white that kind of goes up the wings a little bit and it comes down the wings put black in between all of the white ones down here as well as some other 
um, black dots. That I think, if I'm not mistaken, have little white dots in the middle of them, or maybe like just under them. Which I occasionally do use the other side of my um, my brush for the handle side. All right, and lastly, let's go ahead and put in our uh, antennas and then we will be all done. So take your time with this one um, so that they come out the way you want them to. And if you mess up these, just get a clean brush, dip it in water, wipe it off, and then just erase it, essentially. <laughs> it's really easy to just kind of erase wet paint and start over. And there we go. That is our, that is the end of our class. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to seeing all of yours. If you did paint with me or you plan to paint in the future, um, I would really appreciate you sharing that with me. I would love to see it. I have a free Facebook community where you can share all of your classes, um, all of your class work with me from all of the classes that I teach and it's a really fun um, way to kind of share with that. Um, something that is really fun for me is to get to see that. Um, when I was doing them in person I was able to take a picture and see um, everybody's painting after the class. When I do stuff online I can't I can't do that. I can't see everybody. So um, it really does make my day when I be um, to be able to see your guys' work. It's really fun. I know it's fun for other people too to see all the varying, um, uh, all the varying paintings. It's really fun. Uh, so I just posted posted it in the chat as well. Um, I'll link it above as well as linked below. You'll be able to find it. Um, you can also just look up on groups on Facebook, Samantha Anderson artist community um, and you'll probably find it there too so uh, thanks so much for joining me again I will not have another live class until the end of the month um, we're just going to be doing a simple sil uh, sunset silhouette um, where you get to choose your own silhouette that we paint uh, so come prepared for that that one's going to be a lot of fun um, and yeah thanks so much for joining me and we will see you next time have a great rest of your night and I'm going on vacation, so I won't see you next week. We'll see you at the end of the month. Bye, guys.